Hello listeners and welcome to our latest episode of the Wangels podcast. Today we are chatting about our in-school therapy dog Winnie. I'm here today with her owner, Miss Humber, who is going to help us to get to know Winnie a little better. Welcome Miss Humber. Hello, thank you for inviting me to come and speak about Winnie. Tell us a bit about Winnie. How old is she? Okay, so Winnie is three and a half. She'll be four in October. She is a Cavapoo. So she is, she's got, her mum is a King Charles Cavalier and her dad is a toy poodle. How long have you had Winnie? Did you rescue her or did you have her as a puppy from a breeder? Okay, so we bought Winnie um, at the end of November. Sadly, my mum died very quickly of cancer and um, I felt like the family needed a bit of joy so we went immediately searching for a puppy. I didn't rescue a puppy because um, I've got a daughter who was then five and I was a little concerned about introducing a dog from um, a rescue place with a with a five-year-old daughter. You never you don't know the test the how the dog will react to a child so we were looking for a puppy and so we searched for Winnie Um, for a week or two and then we found Winnie uh, and her litter of um, there were four cavapoos from southwest Wales Um, so we bought her and we picked her up as a surprise for my daughter on the 23rd of December 2020. Where did the name Winnie come from? How did you choose her name? Okay that's a really good question. So we knew that we had Winnie because we paid a deposit Um, And at the time, there were four pups in the litter. Um, And like I just mentioned, we actually bought it from South West Wales, from Merthyr Tydfil. And all pups had a name beginning with B and a Welsh name. Now, I don't remember the other pups, but Winnie's name was Bronwyn. Um, And I'm Welsh myself, so I wanted to keep something Welsh about Winnie, but I didn't really think it would look okay or sound okay to have a dog called Bronwyn in England. So we decided to keep the win bit um, and change it into something a bit more cute, Winnie. We also named her um, within the week of buying her. The the actual, the breeders actually um, called her Winnie from that moment on. So she knew her name when she came to live with us. Um, But we also chose the name because we knew my daughter Anaya at five years old then would have had she had the choice to call her something like Rainbow Sparkles or something like that. So we anticipated that and we decided that we would give Winnie to my daughter named as Winnie. When you got Winnie, was it the intention to, to make her into a therapy dog? No, no, not at all. So, like I just said, the intention was to to bring my family some joy um, to help us with our grief, um, which she did. Um, She really helped us. And then when I came to realise how beneficial she was to me and my family, um, I thought she would... And when I got to know her and after her training, when she lived with us for a few years, and she's really calm and kind... Um, she loves people. I thought, I think she could make a good therapy dog. And then I learned a little bit about um, therapy dogs from other schools. And I just thought, oh, I think Winnie could, could be a really good therapy dog. So we inquired. It took me about four months to make the decision whether we should should make or train Winnie to be a therapy dog. Um, and then, um, yeah, so that's how it came about. But I, I quite like sharing my dog with everybody else. What has it been like these last couple of months having Winnie in school with you? Oh, it, it is lovely to be able to bring your dog to work. I'm sure lots and lots and lots of students and staff would love to bring their dog to work. Um, it has been lovely, but it also it still worries me because I want to make sure she is a good dog and that she um, represents herself well, but also represents her mum very well. Um, and also making sure that she can cope with the school environment because it's really quite, as you know, can be busy, can be loud. Um, So I was worried that maybe the loud would be over, the the noise would be overwhelming for her. But um, so a little bit of worry, a little bit of hesitation, I suppose. Um, And sometimes it can be a bit of a chore because 
every time I leave my office when he wants to come with me and most of the time I just want her to go and rest and sleep so sometimes it can be a bit of a pain but I work really long hours as you'd imagine in my role and sometimes I'm here late at night on my own and it's been lovely to have Winnie with me and have company and um, she's like my little guard dog so when it's like six seven o'clock in the evening and it's really quiet at school if she hears any footsteps footsteps she'll bark so it's a bit of a mixed emotions about um, the last couple of months but it's been really lovely to see um, Wangel students greet Winnie but also to work alongside her she's been working with a few students to help them um, and it's been really lovely to see the impact of Winnie. What has the training been like for her to become a therapy dog? Oh, really good question so we are doing our training through a company called Paws um, and they you have to have three handlers so there's me Miss Fenimore and Miss Reed so we're all training to help Winnie become a therapy dog so essentially we have to do about 18, 20 hours of online learning and listening to videos and understanding what we're doing. But also all three of us have to be able to um, work with Winnie and Winnie has to respond to all of us in the same way. So she has to be able to sit when we say sit, she has to walk on a loose lead, um, she has to do three tricks, um, all sorts of different things uh, as you'd imagine a therapy dog should be able to do. But the challenge is she might do it for her mum, for me, but will she do it for others? But thankfully she does. She's, she's a very good girl with her other handlers. So we're hoping um, for Winnie to have her assessment sometime near Christmas, um, but we're not in any rush because we just want to make sure it's the right thing for everybody. Have you had to make any adaptations to your home while she's in training? No, not at all. No, she um, still rules the roost, shall we say. She has free reign of the sofa and my bed and all sorts of places. Um, no, to be fair, she was really well trained before she came to school. Um, so really, it, it's been just uh, an extension of that. Um, the only difference I would say is that I now have to train my husband and my daughter to make sure they're doing the right things at home as well as school. So, so at the minute, we're, we're, I'm teaching her how to stop barking, to stop reacting. Um, so when those footsteps come closer to me in the evening, I want her to stop barking. So at the minute, I'm teaching her the quiet command, which is to catch her when she's quiet, say good girl, give her a treat. But um, my husband quite hasn't latched on to this yet at home and, and still encourages her to bark out the window when she sees a fox. So we're just still trying to manage that situation between home and school. Thank you, Mrs Humber. That concludes our interview today. It's been great chatting with you about Winnie. Uh, oh, I'm always a pleasure to come to your podcast, but also always a pleasure to talk about Winnie. I welcome Miss Fenmore and Miss Reed, who will look after Winnie in our mental health and wellbeing hub. Welcome. Hello. Hello. So I guess the first question is, what's it like working with Winnie? Do you enjoy it? I love it. I love all animals, especially dogs. And Winnie is an extra special dog. She learns so quickly and has got a really lovely, sweet nature. And it's also lovely to see her helping the pupils feel calm and happy. Um, they always say never work with children or animals, but I want to know which one is the most challenging to work with? Oh, let me think. That's a hard one. Do I prefer working with a sweet, fluffy dog or moody teenagers? Strangely, I enjoy both. What is the training process like? Does it take place on the school site or do you go somewhere special for it? So Winnie's training takes place online and in school. We, me, Miss Reed and Miss Humber have had to do an online course um, with Pause Therapy and the Pause Therapy, um, someone from there comes in and does um, some training with us in school as well. Nice. How long do you spend with Winnie on a daily basis? What does her school routine look like? So Winnie spends two hours um, of her day in the wellbeing hub. Um, that's split between different periods and it's really important that just like us that Winnie has some rest too. Um, so when in her rest period she's up, often upstairs with Mrs Humber. Um, how do the students benefit from working with Winnie? I would say all our students benefit working um, with Winnie. She's got a very calming presence and from what some students have said have helped to re-regulate um, their emotions from being maybe quite anxious and upset to being then more calm and being able to go back to lessons. And the uh, next question is, how does Winnie react to working with students? 
Is she scared? Is she happy? And do you think she enjoys the school environment? Oh, absolutely. You can tell from her happy face and her happy wagging tail that she loves it. Dogs can't fake emotions, so if she was unhappy, we would know. And one of the things we learn on the training course is how to read a dog's emotion. For example, when a dog yawns, it doesn't always mean they're tired. They also do this when they feel stressed. And depending on how she wags her tail, she could actually be nervous and not happy. Oh, that's very interesting. When Winnie becomes fully trained, what will this mean for her? Can she work in other environments like hospitals and care homes, or is it just schools? Well, here we are training her to work specifically in an educational environment, but she could easily be trained to work in other settings. Um, thanks for that. We are very lucky to have Winnie working at the school with us, and thank you both very much for coming today to chat about Winnie and her training. Thank, thank you for having yeah, us. Thank you for having us. Now over to you, Winnie. Do you like working at Wangels? Thank you to all our guests who have featured on today's podcast. It's been great chatting with you. Bye for now.